Hello, welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okuru. The Niger Delta Avengers, a militant group that has claimed responsibility for a series of attacks on oil and gas facilities in Niger's southern energy hub, has denied report of a ceasefire agreement with the country's government. A petroleum ministry Ministry officials said the Avengers, who have claimed responsibility for most of the attacks in the last few weeks, have pushed Niger's crude oil output to 30-year lows, were among those who agreed to a truce. But hours later, the Avengers issued a statement on Twitter denying that it had, a, had any agreement with the Nigerian government. The United States says Nigerian militant Boko Haram have fracturally internally split from the shadow leader of Abu Bakr Shekau. Thomas Waldhauser, a senior U.S. general on Tuesday, said the split is because of Shekau's failure to adhere to guidelines from the Iraq and Syria-based Islamic State. He said Shekau had not adhered to Islamic State instructions, including ignoring calls for Boko Haram to stop using children as suicide bombers. A multinational force has begun operations against Boko Haram along the border between Niger and Nigeria. This is according to a general from Niger Republic, Brigadier General Abdal Sidikal Issa, who is a tactical officer in the Nigerian Air Force for troops based in Niger, Niger's southern zone in Difa, said that troops from Chad and Nigeria were involved in the operation. It began in secret almost a week ago, according to him. This is not the first time the nations in the Lake Chad Basin, which include Niger, Nigeria, Chad and Cameroon, have joined forces against Boko Haram. Boko Haram is a violent Islamic group which started in Nigeria seven years ago and has since launched several deadly attacks in all four countries. The trial of Niger Senate President Bukola Saraki continued at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Saraki appeared before CCT Chairman Justice Danladi Uma for the continuation of his alleged false declaration of assets while he was governor of Kwara State. At the hearing, the Senate President had asked the Chairman Danladi Uma to dismiss himself from the trial. At Tuesday's hearing, Saraki's lawyer Paul Erokoro once again brought up the motion accusing the CCT Chairman of being biased. No matter how much you delay the trial, the consequences uh, that await you will not be reduced. And it's our fear that um, he's already made up his mind and um, will convict uh, the defendant whether or not there is evidence. And that um, in view of that, uh, he should no longer participate in the hearing of the matter. And some other judges should uh, take up the matter. And uh, we've made that presentation today and uh, we hope uh, uh, sufficiently to convince uh, the chairman that uh, he should step away from the case and uh, our further submission is that uh, the stream of justice should be seen to be pure at all times and if there's suspicion, uh, reasonable suspicion, in this case a statement reported by seven newspapers and by four witnesses who were in court who swore to, who swore to affidavit to that effect and the fact that the chairman has not himself disputed uh, that he said so the prosecution itself uh, implicitly admitted that the chairman made that statement. We feel that uh, that's sufficient for the chairman to step away. Uh, the defendant, the senior president, is not afraid of this trial. Uh, we, we really believe that uh, there are no facts to satisfy it. Still, justice must not only be done, but must be clearly and manifestly seen to have been done. They are saying that a reasonable man who watched the proceeding and heard what is tribunal chairman said, we go home and said that the tribunal chairman was biased. And I asked them, what did the tribunal chairman said? And I cited the authority to the fact that you don't take a word in isolation. You have to look at what happened in the proceedings. If you look at the, um, a reasonable man who watched the proceedings from, the, from inception, or even from that day, will it not come to the same conclusion that the chairman came into, that they, are, they were using the late tactics? So we chronicle all those facts, and to the fact that even the chairman says he's going to face the consequence of his trial, his trial. The consequence of trial is, is that it must, must be concluded. So he said, I want to conclude this trial. So, and that the conclusion of the trial may have two, two meaning. It, it, can, it, can, it can head in, conv in conviction, it can end on acuta. I'm saying that the judge has not prejudged his, his mind in saying that I will conclude this case. I felt very disappointed because I'm, I'm involved in the proceedings where one witness was cross-examined for 12 days and they are, they, from the look of things they are going to at least 20 days.
from the way they are going, they will spend 20 days on a, a witness. I've never seen that kind of proceedings in my life where you will spend 12 clear days on a particular witness. It's not done anywhere. And every, this is the second time they will bring application for disqualification. So their intention is just to, to let us stop this case. Let us stop. And if the chairman should disqualify himself, which means there will be no other person to sit in the tribunal. So they, practically they want to end this case through this, uh, the late tactics. So that's what they are doing. A federal high court in Abuja has fixed June 27 for the arraignment of Nigeria Senate President Bukola Saraki and his deputy E.K. Ikwerimado and other defendants. They have been charged with two counts of criminal conspiracy and forgery. Justice Yusuf Halilu fixed the date after ordering amended service of the charges on the defendants. Saraki and his deputy E.K. Ikwerimado and some other principal officers of the upper chamber were accused of forging the Senate standing rules to facilitate their election as as presiding officers of the Senate in June last year. President Muhammad Buhari has appointed Ibrahim Botsun Idris as the new Acting Inspector General of the Police Force. Idris' appointment follows the retirement of Solomon Arase as he closed the compulsory retirement age of 60. Idris was the AIG in charge of operations at the force headquarters in Abuja. I want to formally introduce uh, my successor. Uh, acting Inspector General of Police, Idris Ibrahim. Uh, he's going to be in acting capacity until um, the police council they meet to confirm him. Uh, I want to see this opportunity to thank Nigerians for the cooperation that you have given to me while I served as the Inspector General of Police. By extension, I want to also appeal to you to give the same support that you gave to me to my you know, successor. Uh, he's a younger man, so I'm sure that he, you know, uh, he, he will be abreast with the contemporary policing issues. The leadership of the National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, has agreed to suspend its indefinite strike action. The decision was reached at a meeting between resident doctors and other stakeholders organized by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, with other health officials in Abuja, the nation's capital. NAD's leadership has appealed to members to suspend the strike until the next meeting scheduled for July 14th. The meeting will reconvene in three weeks from now to review progress made in the implementation of agreements reached in the meeting slated for July this year. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission said it had made a breakthrough in how over $15 billion was siphoned from the account of the Office of the National Security Advisor during the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan. The FCC, which has frozen the bank account of the Ikiti State Governor Ayodele Fayoshe and the account of a company belonging to the two sons of a former Minister of State for Defense, Musiliu Obanikoro, said it had recovered evidence of the alleged illegal transactions. From the banks. The Nigeria Labour Congress has described the proposed life pension and immunity for the principal officers of the National Assembly as a product of greed and ego. President of the NLC, Ayuba Waba, in a statement condemned the proposal. The immunity and life pension for the presiding officers were proposed by some senators at a retreat on constitutional review organized by the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on Constitutional Review last week. In the statement issued, NLC said those behind the move only opted to adopt an immoral, bad and illegal model put in place by the governors which could not be sustained. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, has urged electricity consumers in the country to explore its complaint and redress mechanism rather than resort to what it described as jungle justice in settling disputes with officials of the electricity distribution companies, DISCOs. This appeal was contained in a statement by the head public affairs department of the agency and issued by Usman Arabi in Abuja. Power outage in Nigeria has remained a constant issue for several decades. This has led to a significant rise on attacks of staff of the electricity companies by Nigerians who are frustrated with the epileptic power supply. Chairman of the Transition Monitoring Group TMG, Ibrahim Ziki Rulahi, has denied being sacked over alleged funds misappropriation. TMG is a coalition of human rights and civil society organizations in Nigeria. Speaking at a press conference in Abuja, the nation's capital, Ziki Rulahi stated that the alleged malicious statement of sack was only concocted to tarnish the stellar reputation of the coalition by rubbing his name in the mud. He described the report of his sack as false 
and mischievous. Let it be clear that no board meeting of the TMG took place to give vent to any decision to remove me as chairman. The alleged sack only exists in the imagination of some disgruntled and mischievous board members. These elements are the minions of political interests out to smear the image of TMG, giving the sterling role it, it has been playing to support the democratic and governance process in Nigeria. I must also stress that the allegations about financial impropriety are wide and unsubstantiated. The characters making these claims have provided no documentary evidence to support them. I, Comrade Ibrahim M. Zikirula, remains TMG chairman. Anything, to you, anything you have heard to the contrary is false and mischievous. TMG calls on its members, partners, and general public to discontinue the resort to jungle antis by the disgruntled and discredited board members. While I take this onslaught as the price to pay for leadership, I will surely not surrender to these sinister antis. I have always been a fighter. I will fight until the truth is established in this matter. And these plotters are made to eat their ways. I will never surrender. The struggle continues. You know, um, an active member of this organization, I've been following through what has been going on. So it's very you know, disappointing uh, to see that um, the organization that we have all suffered to establish to ensure that we terminate the military dictatorship in this country and to give way for a democratic you know, um, country is now flaunted with some you know, questionable characters that they have actually no organization apart from themselves being always you know, representing themselves. Uh, TMG has you know, um, you know, board of uh, about uh, 16 people and only six people met to take the decision of sacking the chairman. This is absolutely you know, um, against the constitution you know, of the TMG. There's no way six out of 16 people would just sit down, summon illegal meeting, which is not even uh, uh, allowed by the constitution for them to summon, to say that you literally suspended the chairman. I think this is really unacceptable uh, if we are talking about democracy and if we are talking about really due process. You know. Time for a quick break now. When we will come back, we'll look at how the NARA is faring on the interbank market. Don't go away. That was a very good uh, business. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the furniture you, you, you brought was very perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's how we roll. <laughs> uh, because then, let me do you uh, receipts. Yeah. How much of it again? Uh, uh, one million naira. Okay, right, 2.5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The deal was uh, for one million naira. <laughs> okay, right, 3 million. I'll give you 500. Um, oh, no. I just do business like, <laughs> like that now. Oh. Yeah. Uh, in that case, give me back my check. Let me go and look for something that was business. Take. Oh, oh, oh. Your loss. Ah. It is only for incorruptible customers. What are you talking? Now get out. What, what, what kind of this? You, you will just die. No, 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 no. You that will die. That, that is the door. Now get out from here. Rubbish. Look, my people. Make me only add money for original invoice price. That's not corruption. Say no. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. You're watching TV 360 News now. The Lagos State Government and the City of Dubai have entered into a historic partnership that will see Lagos emerge as the first smart city in Africa. The Memorandum of Understanding was signed at the Emery Towers in Dubai by the Lagos State Attorney General and the Commissioner of Justice, Adeniji. Adeniji Kazim and the Chief Executive Officer of Smart City Dubai LLC Jabba Biz Hafez. The signing of the MOU would make Lagos the home of the very first smart city in Africa. A smart city is a growing concept that draws from the success of Dubai's innovative knowledge-based industry to empower business growth for companies and knowledge workers all over the world. 
Nigeria is now affirmed to 281.72 in early trades on Wednesday on thin dollar volumes. This will be the third day after the CBN removed its currency peg rate that the Naira will be trading. The Naira opened at 282 to the greenback after closing weaker at 284 the previous day. The Nigerian currency slumped 30% at its float on Monday. Indicative rate on Wednesday showed banks were quoting to buy the dollar between 281 to 295 Naira. CBN's removal of the currency peg is an effort to improve chronic foreign currency shortages, choking the growth of the Nigerian economy. Oil prices fell on Wednesday after a strong two-day rally. Brent crude was down 55 cents at $50.07 per barrel, while U.S. crude fell 50 cents to $49.95 per barrel. Reports that the Nigerian government had signed a 30-day ceasefire with the militants in the Niger Delta region added a bearish signal to a market that firmed on the back of supply disruptions. The attack of the militants has reduced the country's crude oil output to a 30-year low. Moving on to sports stories now, head coach of Ocal United, Maurice Coleman, has resumed duty after he was suspended for failing to work with his subordinates. Coleman was initially suspended for a month, but it was surprisingly extended by an additional two weeks by the Paul Bassi led management. Bassi came out with a stern warning that Coleman must learn to work with his assistant coaches if he does not want to lose his job. Argentina has made it through to the Copa America final after defeating host country America by 4-0 in the semi-final. Barcelona star Lionel Messi played a huge role in the success story of the Argentines. He became Argentina's leading scorer with a superb free kick as they beat USA on, Mon on Tuesday. They will play the winner of Wednesday's Chile and Colombia semi-final in Sunday's final, while the US will play in Saturday's third place match. Sweden's all-time top goal scorer Zlatan Ibrahimovic has said he will retire from international football after the 2016 European Championship. The former PSG Barcelona, Inter Milan, AC Milan and Juventus striker was included in, the, in Sweden's squad for the Rio 2016 Olympics, prompting suggestion that he will participate at the Games, but the 34-year-old has now announced that Euro 2016 will be his last tournament. Ibrahimovic made his Sweden debut at the age of 20 in a 0-0 friendly draw with France. He is now the country's all-time leading goalscorer with 62 goals and is one of the 10 players to have amassed over 100 caps for the national team. Well, that's all we have on news now. Thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okoro.